Hi everyone. In this video, I want to walk through an example problem of doing a design uh, using the, the you know, more rigorous analysis for gears. So in the problem, we have a setup such that there are two gears, uh, a gear and a pinion coming together. Uh, and I've kind of already prescribed out some of the, the setup stuff here. The pinion has 20 teeth. It's rotating at 1100 RPM. The gear has 40 teeth. We want to design for a safety factor of 1.5 with 99% reliability. The gears are made out of steel with a, a Brunel, hard, <clears throat> Brunel hardness of 350. There's accurate mounting, diametral pitch of eight. The gears are one inches wide with a 20 degree pressure angle, and they're manufactured by a top quality hobbing operation. So then the intended outcome is to determine uh, a horsepower rating for this gear set if we want it to last five years, running 60 hours a week for 50 weeks each year. Okay, so that's all of our setup. So we're gonna start by saying we have our base equation that looks like this. And we have to start filling in the gaps. P we have, B we have, J the geometry factor we can look up, um, FT we don't have. But if we think about what the question is actually asking, it's asking for horsepower rating. And remember before we talked about how power can be determined by the, the force transmitted. So this is actually what we're trying to solve for. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then we need each of these factors. So let's go ahead and start with the factors. The first is the velocity factor, uh, kV. But in order to know the velocity factor, we need to get the pitch line velocity. Pitch line velocity is equal to pi dn over 12. And we actually weren't given the diameter, but we can go ahead and, and specify that or calculate that because we know the pitch and we know uh, the, the end value. So if we rearranged our pitch equation, we'd see that uh, diameter equals n over p. So we can actually plug that in. So we have n of 20 over p of 8. And we're working with the pinion um, in this case. Usually we start, we actually analyze the pinion because it's um, uh, the gear of the two in a pair that's most likely to fail. So usually we'll start with that. So we have this uh, plugged in for diameter, 1100 RPM over 12, and this gives us 720. And if we carried this out, uh, carried out our units, this would be in feet per minute. So now we need to go ahead and come up with KV. If we go to our charts in the book, we can actually find KV here. Um, this is figure 15.24. And we said we had a top quality hobbing operation. So there's a Hobbs operation here. Um, and we'll assume we're on the best line for that, which would be the top quality. So line C. And just below the figure, there's an equation given for, um, for line C, which is 50 plus square root of the pitch line velocity over 50. So we'll go ahead and use that then. 50 plus square root V over 50. And that comes out to be 1.54 for this particular um, setup. All right, next we need, or we can get a value for J since we had that figure up. So if I go back here, uh, I'm looking at a geometry factor. Uh, let's see, we said, so there's two charts here, A and B. Um, the first one is for a 20 degree 
and the second one is for a 25 degree. We have a 20 degree in this case. And again, we're going to use the, the pinion as our um, matching option. Uh, the number of teeth we said was 20, so I have a x-axis here of 20. I'm going to go up. My mating pair had 40, so the lines all get really close together here, um, and it gets kind of hard to read. But what we could do is, if we're going to assume worst case scenario, we might say that there's no load sharing, uh, which is kind of a, you know, less likely, but also just a worst case scenario situation. So if we do that, we could pick this line here, which is 0.24 approximately, it looks like, just before 0.25. So we'll go ahead and say 0 0.24. And yeah, we can move on from there. All right, next might work on mounting factor. Mounting factor we can pull from a table in the textbook. Um, first, on face width, we said it was one inch wide, so that falls into this first column. Uh, and then, depending on what side of uh, style of mountings, it says accurate mountings, um, so probably somewhere between here and here. Um, arbitrarily, we might pick a middle, this, this middle value, which gives us a little bit more um, slot built into it, um, kind of more conservative, I guess, as a, as a choice. So that's all kind of personal opinion, I guess, on that. And overload factor, KO. Um, we don't have anything in the problem that specifies whether we should expect any shock loading, so we might go ahead and pick a KM value of 1, or excuse me, a KO value of 1. So putting this all together, we get Ft times 8 over 1 times 0 0.24 times 1.54 times 1 times 1.6. And this gives us that the stress in our part is 82.1 times the tangential force. So again, we're trying to find a horsepower rating. And this tells us the stress in terms of the force transmitted. And force transmitted, remember, is related to that um, horsepower that we're passing through our gear set. So in that case, we don't actually know the a numerical solution here. Instead, we need to find something that we can compare this against. And our comparison point is, you know, failure, what, what uh, the stress would be at failure. So we need to go ahead and apply a fatigue analysis to this uh, in order to determine that failure point. So separating this out a little bit, remember we have the equation that looks something like this. See if I can get all my correct factors in here. Something like that. So we need to start plugging things in. Um, SN prime, we were given that this is uh, steel with a 350 hardness. Uh, and if we look back at our fatigue chapter, we'd actually see there's an equation for SN prime based on that, which is 250 times that hardness, uh, which comes out to be in PSI. So we can make use of that. Um, load factor. We'll pick a load factor of, actually I'm just going to write it in, of 1. Because uh, the, the diametral pitch is greater than 5, that means that our CG is also 1. CS, surface factor, um, I would read this off of figure 8.13 and we'd get 0 0.66. Reliability factor from table 15.3, 99% reliability, 
gives us 0 0.814. And we don't have anything about high temperature, so that gives us a temperature correction of 1. And this is not given as an idler gear, which gives us an KMS of 1.4. Great. So we've got this uh, uh, spelled out, and we can go ahead and calculate that through. So if we do this, I think it comes out to be 65,812 PSI. And this, we're going to go ahead and set equal to, now, our sigma value from up there. So we have 82.1 FT is equal to 65812. Great. And what this is doing is it's basically saying, here's the stress in our year, here's the stress limit based on fatigue, what do we expect to happen? Now the one thing that I haven't included yet is we said we wanted a safety factor of 1.5. Um, two ways we can think about this, we can think about it as reducing the fatigue limit or increasing the stress in order to factor in that 1.5. So I would go ahead and just pull this out and say, I need to multiply this times 1.5 to build in my safety factor there. And if I do this, then I calculate that FT with a safety factor of 1.5 would be 534.4 pounds. So that's the load that I can transmit at the gear tooth and presumably not shear that tooth off under this fatigue loading condition. So I can from that calculate my power which is equal to FTV over 33,000 and I get 534.4 times my pitch line velocity that we calculated before and 33,000 and this comes out to be 11.66 horsepower. So what this is saying is I can transmit up to 11.66 horsepower through my gear train, gear, my gear set I should say, um, and presumably not fail in fatigue and I have built in a safety factor of uh, 1.5 into this. Now you may ask, one thing I, uh, that you might notice is I didn't really take into account, uh, where did it go? I didn't really take into account this life here. And I probably should have written it down, but basically what the only thing I'm really having to check here is how many cycles this would be. So if I took five years, multiplied it by 50 weeks per year, multiplied it by 60 hours per week, multiplied that by 60 um, minutes per hour, and multiplied that by 1100 RPM, I'd get 9.9 .9 times 10 to the eighth cycles. So where this comes into play is that this value is larger than 1 times 10 to the sixth, which is what we usually consider to be um, that infinite life condition. So I really already did factor that in down here where I said that the SN prime was equal to 250 times 350 because that's an infinite life condition um, specification um, and therefore I've, I've kind of already built that in. I should have made that more clear but I didn't realize till the end that I had skipped over it. So we've, we're expecting it to last a whole, a whole bunch of cycles and to do that with a 1.5 safety factor we have to limit our power to 11.6 horsepower. All right, thank you.